All right, so it's usually about this time of the semester that I have students get a little bit mad at me and we're going to show you why with this problem. So let's imagine that you're shoveling your driveway free of snow. We did have that snowstorm over Easter this past year, but it's over a layer of ice so we can ignore friction. You apply five newtons of force to the shovel. The shovel weighs, or has a mass, excuse me, has a mass of two kilograms and you're gonna shovel down your whole 10 meter long driveway. If you start from rest, how fast are you going at the end of the driveway? Now we just spent a lot of time just previously on our unit of forces and motion, where we would do a kinematics process. I wanna know how fast, so I'd start with kinematics, and then I wouldn't have the acceleration, so I'd have to do a force analysis. And we'd probably take up this entire board trying to analyze how fast I'm going if I start from rest. But if we rely on the power of work and energy, we see that we can solve this pretty quickly. So let's look at that. And so in order to move that shovel down the driveway, you have to do work on it. So let's look at the work being done on the shovel. Now remember, any force acting on the shovel can do work as long as that force has a component in the direction of the motion. Well, this motion is horizontal down that driveway. And there's only one force moving, or sorry, acting in that horizontal direction. The force of gravity and the normal force, but they're perpendicular. So they don't do work on the shovel as it moves down the driveway. So the net work is also the work done by our five newton force. So we want to remember that that work is the force times the distance and since it's acting perfectly parallel to the motion, um, we don't have to worry about the component of that work. And so we have five newtons times our distance of 10 meters. We get 50 joules of work. All right. We also know that the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So we keep that in mind we know that the net work, which we've determined is 50 joules, must equal our final kinetic energy minus our initial kinetic energy. Well, we're told we start from rest, so there is no initial kinetic energy. So 50 must equal our final kinetic energy. And since we wanna know that final speed, we can determine that value. So we have, 50 is equal to one half the mass, which is two times the final squared. Those two cancel each other out. One half of two is one. And we get the square root of 50 is equal to the final velocity. And as much as I probably should have an estimate of that in my head, I don't. So I will pull out my handy dandy calculator. The square root of 50 is seven. 0 0.07 meters per second. So in a lot less space and a lot less process, we're able to determine that final speed, that how fast we're moving at the end of the driveway using the power of work and energy. So now we have a new, more powerful tool in our toolbox, like this super 18 watt or 18 whatever uh, drill instead of our little hand drill that we were using with kinematics and forces. All right, good job.